Today's video was requested by Supreme Josh. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You. Hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Although commonly known as the killer whale, the orca is actually the largest member of the oceanic dolphin family. The popular name for the orca is derived from Assassina balinas, a term 18th century Basque whalers used in reference to them, which literally translates as whale killer. It was based on their observations of orca pods hunting baleen whales. The orca's easily distinguishable by its black back, white chest and sides, white patches above the eyes, and the dark gray saddle patch across its back. Its heavy and robust Bust body features, paddle-like pectoral fins, and a large dorsal fin, which, for males, can be up to six feet tall. Males are larger than females, weighing over six tons, with lengths from 20 to 26 feet. The largest killer whale ever recorded was an 11-ton male measuring 32 feet. Orcas have good eyesight, a good sense of touch, and excellent hearing. Through their exceptional echolocation abilities, they identify objects and prey in their environment by emitting clicking noises and listening for echoes. They live in groups called pods and are a highly intelligent and highly social species. It's claimed that they're intelligent to the point of self-awareness. They've sophisticated vocal behaviors and hunting techniques which can be particular to a specific group and passed across generations, which is an indication of animal culture. They're also the apex predators of their environment and will engage prey as large as adult baleen whales. Number 6. Douglas Robertson Despite there being no instance of orcas killing humans in the wild, there have been a small number of reported clashes in 1972, about 200 miles from the Galapagos Islands, a pod of orcas ran the hull of Lucette, a 43-foot-long wooden schooner captained by author and sailor Douglas Robertson. He managed to escape the sinking vessel with his wife Lynn, their three children, and an inexperienced crew member they'd picked up. The six people escaped using an inflatable life raft and a solid hull dinghy but with little provisions. For 38 days, they lived as castaways, collecting rainwater and catching turtles, mahi-mahi and flying fish while using a makeshift sail heading towards Central America. They were eventually rescued. Number 5. Hans Kretschmer The closest an orca came to directly killing someone in the wild was at Point Sur, a state marine reserve and conservation area off the coast of California. The victim was Californian surfer Hans Kretschmer. While resting on his board, an orca reportedly sunk its teeth into his thigh, dragged him under the water and bit him several times. Apparently, this is the only documented incident in which a wild orca has ever bitten a human being. Kretschmer survived the attack, but his wounds required a staggering 100 stitches. Killer whales are a cosmopolitan species, meaning they're found in a wide variety of marine environments in all of the world's oceans and most of its seas. In fact, with the exception of certain areas of the Arctic, as well as the Black and Baltic Seas, killer whales are found everywhere as they adapt very well to any climate. According to SeaWorld, they're the most widely distributed mammal, second only to humans. Their striking appearance and imposing size, along with their intelligence, playfulness and trainability, have made them popular at aquatic theme parks. Orcas are the only extant members of the Orcanus orca genus, and even without any clear subspecies yet. 
They can be differentiated based on their behavior, where they live, what they eat, how they communicate, and certain differences in their appearance. Resident orcas visit the same area frequently and live in large groups, primarily eating fish. Transient orcas travel in smaller groups, roaming widely along coasts with a diet based on marine mammals. Transient pods are more aggressive and similar to a wolf pack, their members work together hunting for prey. Even if they live in the same areas, residents and transients avoid each other, and genetic data shows that they haven't interbred for 10,000 years. Offshore whales travel far from the shore, living in groups of 20 to 75 members. Evidence suggests they're smaller in size and typically feed on schooling fish, but have also been observed tackling much larger prey. Number 4. Alexis Martinez Alexis Martinez was one of the most experienced trainers at the Loro Park in Tenerife. On December the 24th, 2009, he was working with Keto, a 14-year-old male orca. Keto, who was born in captivity at SeaWorld Orlando, Florida, had been described by other trainers as not being completely predictable. While practicing the routine for a show set to take place on Christmas Day, Keto rammed Martinez in the chest. He died before fellow trainers could intervene. It was initially believed he'd drowned after being knocked unconscious. The park didn't consider it an attack, but rather a tragic accident caused by roughhousing. An autopsy later revealed the cause of death had been serious injuries inflicted by Keto. Martinez had bite marks all over his body, tears to his vital organs, and multiple compression fractures. In Western culture, Pliny the Elder first described orcas around 70 AD. He wrote that they were like an enormous mass of savage flesh with teeth and that they charged and pierced through whales like warships ramming. Despite no recorded fatalities caused by orcas in the wild, attacks by orcas in captivity have ended in injury and even death. Along with their intelligence and ability to engage in strategic attacks, their sheer mass and strength is enough to make them potentially dangerous. With strong conical teeth, which can grow up to four inches in length, their jaws exert an almost inescapable grip. Their front teeth are slightly forward and outward inclined, so when it bites into its prey, the back of its teeth support the grip. Aside from tearing at their victims, orcas use their powerful bodies to ram prey, breaking bones and producing life-threatening injuries. They've been observed throwing seals several feet in the air with their flukes. They're known to partially beach themselves in the pursuit of prey and have even gone after moose, according to SeaWorld. Number 3. Kelty Burn In captivity, there have been four recorded fatal orca attacks, and one male named Tillicum was involved in three of them. The first was February 20th, 1991, at Sealand of the Pacific in Victoria, British Columbia. When Kelty Byrne, a part-time trainer, fell into the tank, Tillicum rushed to her, grabbed her by the foot, and dragged her underwater. Two smaller female orcas present in the tank joined in the attack, Horrified visitors saw the three orcas continuously blocking Burn's path while pushing and throwing her around the pool. Once, Burn managed to reach the side and tried to get out, but the orcas pulled her screaming back into the pool, continuing to submerge her. The trainers tried to help Burn by throwing her a life ring, but the orcas kept her away from it. Burn surfaced three times before she drowned. It took several hours before her body could be recovered from the tank. Sealand of the Pacific closed soon after the attacks, selling all their whales to the SeaWorld franchise. Number 2. Daniel Dukes Tillicum claimed his second victim at SeaWorld Orlando, Florida 
on July the 5th, 1999, the night before Daniel Dukes evaded part security and hid until after closing, he then entered the Orca's tank naked. When park workers approached the tank the next day, 27-year-old Daniel Dukes' new dead body was found draped across Tillicum's back. He was covered in bite marks, bruises, abrasions, and his scrotum had been ripped open. Drowning was determined to have been the cause of death and no drugs were found in Duke's system. According to SeaWorld staff, this wasn't the first instance of Duke's diving with sea mammals unclothed. Unfortunately, it was his last. An accidental fall was ruled out as to enter Tillicum's tank, Dukes needed to hop a three-foot plexiglass barrier, some guardrails, and climb down several steps. Number 1. Dawn Brancho Dawn Brancho was Tillicum's last victim. She was an experienced trainer who on February 24, 2010, was part of Dine with Shamu show at SeaWorld Orlando alongside Tillicum, the show's main attraction. Towards the end of the performance, Tillicum reacted poorly to one of her commands, dragged Brancho underwater, and drowned her. Eyewitnesses claimed Tillicum grabbed her by the forearm, while park officials said he grabbed her ponytail. The final autopsy report read that Brancho died of multiple traumatic injuries and drowning. According to SeaWorld officials, Tillicum died in January 2017 due to a bacterial infection. A BAFTA award-nominated 2013 documentary called Black Fish focuses on Tillicum, his capture in 1983 off the coast of Iceland, the attacks he was involved in, as well as the fate of whales held in captivity. Once in the water with them, there's little you can do against an orca, which can take on some of the largest animals on Earth and even elite predators like the great white shark. The potential of killing us is undeniable, but that doesn't mean that attacks are likely. There hasn't been a recorded case of an orca eating a human. We don't look like their typical prey, and studies have shown that orcas tend to dislike human meat. The incidents that occurred in captivity mostly involved trainers, and in some cases, poor management by the facility. The best survival policy here is to avoid contact. Orcas in theme parks may seem playful and harmless, but that's the result of training and relationships cultivated over time. Even then, the reality is orcas are apex predators and wild animals, hence unpredictable. On March 15, 2014, Chris Kremers and Lisan Froome arrived in Panama for a six-week holiday shortly after their college graduation. After touring Panama for a couple of weeks, the two Dutch girls arrived in Boquette on March 29th, 